This video introduces two rules of inference for biconditionals. One is for introducing a biconditional and one is for eliminating a biconditional. You are currently watching For the Love of Wisdom, a YouTube channel on free thought, philosophy, and critical thinking. It includes videos on logic, but it also includes videos on happiness, on religion, on ethics, on, and on science. This video is part of a series of videos on symbolic logic. And if you have not watched the previous videos, uh, it's possible that you won't follow this. I do advise that you watch the earlier videos in the series or at least know what they contain before continuing. Each of these videos also corresponds to a blog page on my blog, which will go over this. So you can read it or you can watch the video depending on which works better for you for learning symbolic logic. So let me just mention what we've covered already. And if you need to go back to an earlier video, you can do that. So the first video was on good arguments. It covers what makes an argument a good one. And for deductive arguments, which the subsequent videos focus on, a good argument is a sound argument whose premises are evidently true. And a sound argument is one whose premises are true and whose form is valid. So uh, having a valid form means that if its premises are true, its conclusion has to be true. Its conclusion will follow from the premises. And so in the subsequent videos, we're looking at ways in which the conclusion has to follow from the premises. And so first of all, we cover the rules of inference. Uh, we cover them for conjunctions and disjunctions, and then for conditionals, and then for dilemmas. And then we moved on from the rules of inference to the rules of replacement. And these are rules for replacing an expression or part of an expression with another one that has the same truth value. And we also introduced the idea of material equivalence. This is to say that two things have the same truth value. So here this says P and Q have the same truth value. And that has the same truth value as if P then Q and if Q then P. And this is also known as a biconditional. That's what we'll be focusing on in this video. Okay, from there we moved on to doing proofs. And we started with just the rules of inference for our proofs. So this introduces it. This covers solutions to problems that were given at the end of this video. And then we went on to conditional proof. This is a way of proving a conditional by assuming the if part of the conditional, the antecedent, and trying to prove the consequent, which is the then part of the conditional. So if we want to prove if P then Q, we would assume P, try to get Q. Okay, and then there were some solutions to homework from introducing conditional proof. So this video is focusing on some new rules, and the first of these is called biconditional introduction. This rule takes two conditionals whose antecedent and consequent are interchanged. So here P is the antecedent, uh, but in this conditional P is the consequent, and here Q is the consequent, here Q is the antecedent. Okay, so if we have two conditionals like that, we can infer the biconditional, uh, P if and only if Q. And this is called a biconditional because it's equivalent to two conditionals like this. Okay, and here's a quick proof of this. We have if P then Q is a premise, if Q then P is a premise. We want to prove P if and only if Q. So first we use conjunction on the first two lines to get if P then Q and if Q then P. And then we use material equivalence to get P if and only if Q. Okay, that's simple enough. And the other rule that corresponds with biconditional introduction but goes the other way is called biconditional elimination. And that begins with the biconditional and it lets you infer one of the two conditionals that the biconditional is equivalent to. So you can from P if and only if Q, you may infer if P then Q, or you may infer if Q then P. And here's a quick proof of that. P 
P if and only if Q is our premise. And then we use material equivalence to get if P then Q and if Q then P. And then we use simplification to get one of the two conjuncts here, if P then Q. Okay, now we're going to go over a couple of proofs. These are going to be proofs for the rules of material equivalence. This is one of the rules of replacement, and there are two forms of it. First, we'll go over this one quickly. Uh, we want to prove the form of material equivalence that we normally use when we're trying to prove other uh, rules of replacement. And here we're using biconditional elimination and biconditional introduction to prove this. And it's a quick, straightforward proof. So what we want to prove is two conditionals. One conditional is going to be P if and only if Q, then if P then Q, and if Q then P. And the other conditional we want to prove is if P then Q, and if Q then P, then P if and only if Q. So we start by assuming uh, P if and only if Q. And through biconditional elimination, we get if P then Q, and we get if Q then P. And then we conjoin those, and that ends our conditional proof, and we get that. And then we go the other way. We assume if P then Q and if Q then P. And we simplify it twice to get if P then Q on one line, if Q then P on another. And then we use biconditional introduction to get our biconditional P if and only if Q. And then that ends that conditional proof. We close it off and write down the conditional that it proves. And then we use biconditional introduction once again on this conditional and this one. And we get the conditional that we're trying to prove. Okay, that's straightforward and simple. Now we're going to try to prove the other uh, form of conditional, sorry, the other form of material equivalence, one we use less. And this will be a little more, uh, we'll go through this one more slowly. So we want to prove this form of material equivalence without using it. P, if and only if Q, is equivalent to P and Q or not P and not Q. And what this is saying is that when two statements are materially equivalent to each other, they're either both true or they're both false. They have the same truth value. Okay, and let me just adjust this a bit. Okay, so we start by assuming if P then Q. Sorry, P if and only if Q. And we want to get P and Q or not P and not Q. So how can we do this? Well, it's a disjunction that we're trying to prove, and we can get a disjunction through a dilemma. Uh, let's try getting it through constructive dilemma. So to get it through a constructive dilemma, we're going to need a disjunction and two conditionals. Well, we know that this here is equivalent to two conditionals. So not that, maybe we won't use these two conditionals here, but a conditional is also equivalent to a disjunction. And that's going to give us the disjunction that we can use with a constructive dilemma. So we have line 2, if P then Q, is equivalent to not P or Q. And here's what this can do for us. If we can get a conditional through conditional proof of, say, if not P, then not P and not Q. And we can get another one of if Q, then P and Q. Then we have the two conditionals that we need to work with this to basically get this. So that's the plan. And it should be pretty straightforward to get these conditionals. Because as you can see, if given this, if, well, given this here, if P is true, well, Q must be true, and if, or if, in this case, if P is false, Q must be false, and if Q is true, P must be true. Okay. So we start with an assumption, not P. And we're going to try to prove not P and not Q. Okay, how can we get not Q? 
Well, look at line 3. We, ha we can get not Q through modus tollens. And so we do that on line 6 from lines 3 and 5. We get not Q by modus tollens. And now that we have that, we can just conjoin them. We get not P and not Q from lines 5 and 6 conjunction. And that allows us to end this conditional proof. Let me adjust that a little bit. So we have if not P, then not P and not Q. And now we want to use, assume, we're going to assume Q now and try to get P and Q. So we get P through modus ponens. We'll look at line three, if Q then P. So P comes from that pretty straightforwardly. And then we can get P and Q by conjunction. And then we can close off that conditional proof and we get if Q then P and Q. And one thing I want to point out here is that we have a couple conditional proofs nested within a larger conditional proof. This is an example of nesting conditional proofs. And we'll look at a deeper example of this in a later video. Okay. So, that's, okay, so we get if Q then P and Q. And now we can use constructive dilemma. And on line four, we have our disjunction. On line eight, we have a conditional. And on line 12, we have a conditional. And those three lines together allow us to conclude not P and not Q or P and Q through a constructive dilemma. And now notice that this is not exactly what we're looking for. Um, they're on the opposite sides. So we want to switch those around with commutation. And now we get what we're looking for. And we can close off this conditional proof. And we get P if and only if Q, then P and Q, or not P and not Q. And now we're going to want to do the other condi conditional proof, which goes from uh, this part to trying to prove this part. So we begin with our assumption P and Q or not P and not Q. And we want to get P if and only if Q. We know this is equivalent to a pair of conditionals. So if we prove each of those conditionals, we can then use biconditional introduction to get the biconditional that we're looking for. So let's start with trying to prove if P then Q. So we start with the assumption of P. And I'm going to double negate this. And why am I going to double negate this? Well, what I want to, I have a disjunction here and I want to get one of the disjuncts. I want to get P and Q from this. So I want to be able to deny this part here, not P and not Q. And so I'm, what I need is not, not P and not Q. So I want to get that. And I can get that through De Morgan's, but first I'm going to have to do some addition. So now that I have not, not P, I use addition to get not, not P or not, not Q. And now I use De Morgan's to get not, not P and not Q. And that's the denial of this disjunct here, which allows me to use disjunctive syllogism. And so from lines 16 and 20, disjunctive syllogism gives us P and Q. And from there, we can simplify it to get Q. And now we can close off this conditional proof. And we get if P, then Q. And now I want to try to prove if Q, then P. And one way I could do it is assuming Q and going ahead and trying to prove P. But I'm going to do this one differently just because it saves a line in the proof. I'm going to try to prove the transposition of if P then Q, and that is if not Q, then not P. So I'm going to begin by assuming, sorry, the transposition of if Q then P is if not P then not Q. And I'm going to be, try begin by assuming not P. So I'm going to try to get not Q from this and then transpose it to get if Q then P. Okay, now that I have not P, what can I do with it? Well, 
I want to deny this disjunction over here, this disjunct, so I can get not P and not Q, and that will give me not Q. So to get not P and Q, I have to first get not P or not Q. And I can get that through addition. And then through De Morgan's, I get not P and Q, which is the denial of this disjunct. So through disjunctive syllogism, I can now get not P and not Q. And then I can simplify to get not Q. And through conditional proof, I can get if not P, then not Q. And then through transposition, I can get if Q, then P. And then I can use biconditional introduction on lines 23, where I have if P, then Q, on line 30, where I have if Q, then P, and I get P if and only if Q. That allows us to end this conditional proof is from lines 16 through 31, and that gives us P and Q or not P and not Q, then P if and only if Q. And then we can use biconditional introduction to get the biconditional that we were trying to prove all along. P if and only if Q, if and only if P and Q or not P and not Q. Okay, and now let's take a look at an alternate way to finish off this proof. So here we have line 24. Up here on line 24, we had to assume not P. Here we're assuming Q. And we're going to use double negation on that. We get not not Q or not not P. We commute that to get not not P or not not Q. Then we do De Morgan's and we get not, not P and not Q. Then we use disjunctive syllogism to get P and Q. And then we get P through simplification. And the rest proceeds the same way. Okay, in the next video, we're going to be looking at nesting conditional proofs. You saw some examples in this video. Uh, the next video, we're going to be proving the rule of exportation. So take a look at that and try to figure out how to prove that if you have the time. And then come watch the next video on symbolic logic when it's made available. Oh, and let me mention again, this is also going to be written up on the blog. So check the link below for a link to the blog. And you can read up on what I covered in this video.